Welcome to Sit Down News. Tonight we're going to be talking about a post that I did on the lovesick capo regime. Um, that's in reference to Joey Amato. Joey Amato is a captain with the Columbo crime family. Joey and I were pretty close in the street. He was a friend of mine. Um, we would meet often. I would meet him in a park in Staten Island, or we would pick a spot and we would both meet. Not that we were uh, trying to hide from anybody, but you know, certain guys, you don't want them knowing your business. Um, Joey, Joey would had a had a um, a French mastiff, and he liked to go for a walk, and we'd smoke cigars, and and we used to talk about all kinds of things. We would talk about the life, and we would talk about women, and 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 whatnot. And um, Joey was having some issues that were going on. He was dating somebody, a, a, a young woman. I had met her. She was a real nice person, and. Um, he was running around cheating on her and she had found out once and then twice and it just turned into a whole mess and joey was meeting with me and he was complaining and you know it was really bothering him i think that he had definitely had a broken heart because the woman naturally didn't want nothing to do with him no more especially after um catching him a few times and um one of the times he had told me he cursed her brother. He said, you know, I hope I help I helped this mud out and I, I helped him with so many things. And he and this is what he did to me. He went and told his sister that he seen me with, with another girl and, and whatnot. So it was just it was getting bad and I could tell it was bothering him. So I used to meet and talk with him. And one particular day I meet with him and he's kind of like, as I wrote in the blog, He's like smiling like the cat that, you know, ate the canary and he was in a, a, an upbeat mood. And usually late of the late, when we used to meet, he wasn't, um, you know, he was in a bad mood, but this particular day, he happened to be very upbeat. Oh, we started talking and he says, um, you know, I'm driving a crazy, this girl. So I said, oh, really? He says, yeah. He says, you know, she thinks I got people following her. You know, and I tell everywhere she's been. So I thought maybe he did have somebody. Fine. He had a lot of guys around him. And he proceeded to tell me that he put a tracking device, GPS, that we use sometimes in that life. And he put it onto her car and he was tracking her movements. So I shook my head. I, I said, Joey, let me ask you something. You went and bought this thing? Yeah, I bought it. And you're, how are you tracking? How are you tracking it? You, oh, I'm tracking on a computer. I'm tracking it on my phone. I says, and you're paying for, yeah, I pay. He, he was paying on a credit, bought it with a credit card. Excuse me. I said, Joey, you, you got to get that off. Go get that off a car. He says, why? I says, you, you're going to get pinched. You're going to get busted. Go get that thing off a car. Listen to me. You got to take it off of there. And, you, and, and it's tied back to you. So, it's, it's only going to come back. Somebody ever sees this thing or, or, or she finds it, gives it to somebody. It's going to be tied back to you. He says, you think so? Cause I says, I'm telling you, I know. So, so unfortunately, Joey didn't listen to me. And the more and more I met him, he, he spoke about this and he spoke about telling her she was a hairstylist that he knows that she left the hair salon at this time. And she went over here and he was, he was kind of, freaking the girl out and she assumed that he had people following her she even told him you better not have nobody following me and i think that by telling her over and over again i think he kind of tipped tipped his hand and tipped her off that maybe it was more than guys following her because she, obviously now she must have been on the lookout for that seeing if somebody was following her you know in her car or whatnot and um I had met with him a couple of times and, and tried to tell him, did you get that off the car yet, Joey? You got to take it off. And he was just, no matter what we met about, even if it was about business, the conversation always went to the subject of this particular woman. And I had just broken up with somebody myself. And I said, look, Joe, 
don't even I don't even talk about that person anymore. That's like past history. You'll be so much better off if this is what you wanted. And, you know, she don't want nothing to do with you. Go about your life. She goes about hers and God bless her. And um, but he wouldn't let it go. And then he thought that she was dating a friend. And in that life, that means another inducted member. And he was having a fit. And um, that was not the case. We found out. And he was looking to go grab somebody else that I don't think had anything to do with it. And um, what took place is that I am now eliminated from this, from this life. And I find out like everybody else that they do lock Joey up and how, and how it takes place is that the girl supposedly must have found it. And I think that she probably maybe a guy or somebody else, unless she went onto the car and she finds this thing. And just like in the movies, she slaps this thing under a bus in Staten Island. And it's not discovered until um, they do some kind of routine maintenance on, on, on the, uh, on the bus. And they find this thing. And at first, from what I read, they, they think it's a bomb and they call the bomb squad and the cops are involved. But when they find it, obviously now, it goes further than that. Now you get the government, the agents, and the FBI get involved. And that particular incident opened up the door for a federal investigation on Joey and his crew and why attacks were you know, issued and, and, and approved or however they do it with the, with the courts, court ordered, why attack. And they just get a treasure trove of information on Joey and his crew. And um, shockingly, I couldn't believe the things that, I, and I've read the transcripts, I can't even believe the things that they were talking about, especially Joey, on these cell phones. And they knew better. And then they were getting um, burner phones, which, you know, I don't know if anybody realizes that those ain't that good anymore either. And they just, it, the, the case just piled and piled upon information and piled and piled on them. And um, it turned out to be a big investigation. And, you know, when they had enough information, they just wind up sweeping Joey up and all his guys and, and, and his, his son was included in all of this. And um, it, I just was shocked that a, I thought that he would listen and take it off. He never listened. He didn't, he didn't take the thing off. And, um, and that when that turns into an investigation, just by the things that they were talking about and they were trying to talk cold, but it was ridiculous. And, um, unfortunately for Joey, he's not a younger guy and he was doing very well. Joey had a big crew around him. He was an earner. He was making a lot of money. He had a lot of guys around him. He was straightening guys out, um, meaning inducting guys. And, uh, and Joey, for the people who don't know, was in the Colombo war and he went away for that. And Joey was on the other side, meaning that he was opposing uh, the Persicos. Who, who, who was on one side and then you had the other side and, and Joey's one of the few guys too, that they, when he comes home from prison, they, they bring him back and give him a position. So he was well-liked Joey and he was doing very well in Staten Island. As far as the Columbos uh, went in Staten Island, Joey was the guy out there and he just threw it all away over this woman. But more importantly, Obviously, his heart was broken. And if he loved her that much, why don't you just be loyal to the girl? And he would still be with her. She was she was a good girl. She would have been with him. I'm sure she would have been with him. And, you know, the girl said enough's enough. And she she didn't want to ha have it. And, you know, he, he would meet me and then say he was good with it. And he had other women. And, and then it would go right back to her. So obviously, he wasn't good with it. And I used to kid around with him when I used to say, Joe, look at me. You ever hear me mention anything? I, I don't care. You know, like you, you have to move on. And he just couldn't do it. And I, that's why he was lovesick and he had, he had a broken heart. And that's why I, I named that the, uh, the title that. But uh, at the end of the story, and this is a short one, 
as people know from either reading it or hearing about it, um, most of these guys all took pleas and Joey and his son were the two holdouts and they also took a plea and I think they're going to get sentenced soon if they, or, or maybe they did already. And I think he was facing, I think, seven to 10 years. And, you know, Joey, I think, was in his early 60s. You know, that's it. You know, he's going to be an old, old man by the time if he makes it out um, without, you know, to get a lot of health issues in there. You know, it's not the best place to be to start getting sick. And um, it just, I shook my head and, and I still shake my head. It's unfortunate. Um, you know, there's no winners in this, in this uh, scenario. Um, probably the only person that benefited was the, the young woman. And she moved on with her life, I'm sure. And she was a nice, sweet person. And, um, you know, and this is what happened. And everything that Joey had, is gone and Joey's locked up in some federal uh, detention center and uh, he's waiting to go do his time. And, uh, and that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the story. It was a short one. I'm going to head to bed. Ciao. Hope you have a nice night. Take care.